Good morning. It's a bit of a rainy day. Before we get into that saw, I want to finish up with this one right here. This is that 2083 piston and uh, the cylinder were both pretty badly uh, scored. And since the scoring got into the plating on the inside of the cylinder, the bore of the cylinder, I couldn't really salvage it. So I found a top end from a Shokin Turf and Temper. Thank God for people like that. And was able to put this saw back together. And this is going to be kind of a twist on a theme. You got an old saw. You bought it to cut firewood got it cheap now what do you do so I've got this 42 it has a 246 cover because I have a whole bunch of these parts it's a 40 cc class saw what I want to do is take it from where it is now <laughs> which I really don't know we're gonna find out it's like you bought one of these darn things on eBay or you bought it on uh, Craigslist and now you got to evaluate first what you have for a saw. Spent your hundred bucks, hundred fifty bucks, maybe two hundred dollars, whatever you spent, and we're going to take this saw from where it is now to making it run, to make it run better, and see if we can't turn this into a good firewood saw for the typical guy who's just got some, uh, you know, smaller wood. It's not going to be felling trees, but anyway, for now, let me just see if I can't get. A video of these two saws running. So let's start with the 2083, see if it'll fire. And again, that's the 2083 that has the uh, 2083 2 or 2077 top end on it. The bar and chain, or what came with the saw, it was the guy's bar and chain. I can tell you right now, they're not very impressive. The chain really needs sharpening. But this is not about cookies. This is about seeing whether or not the, uh, the top end and the freshening up of the carburetor um, has produced a running saw. say it runs good but it runs it looks like I have to do a little bit of tweaking on the uh, low side of that carburetor to make it start easier all right now we'll go on with this saw right here this series you have a wide range of different models and what this saw is going to represent is a cheap hundred fifty dollar saw that a guy bought off of eBay or he got out of Craigslist or something like that and he has to turn into a firewood saw. And the guy may not be a saw guy and uh, he bought it. Now he has to make it run and cut some firewood. So that's what we're going to try to do. That's the game. Let's see if it has any gas. And if it does, it's going to be old which would also be typical of, you know, it's got a little bit of gas and a little bit of bar oil. The kind of things you got to look at when you buy a saw, you know, for you saw guys, you already know this. So you just not pay a whole lot of attention. But for those who are not, you want to buy something that you can still buy parts for. Something that starts with a three, you know? You want to buy a 300 series Husqvarna in the minimum. You know, a 340, uh, 345, 350, I mean there's a whole bunch of them. I would prefer 345, 350, 346, 
uh, that series for a small saw. They're cheap. Parts are still available. But this is a guy, you know, the simulation, the video, this is a guy, what does he know? He heard Husqvarna's a good brand, found one for cheap, bought it, and now he wants to know what he's got. The other things you got to look for if you're going to buy a, a saw, you want to make sure it's complete. You want to make sure that all the covers are there, they're not broken or cracked up, you know. Throttle works, choke is working, switches work, nothing's bent, the chain brake works. You know, you want to have a bar and chain that's serviceable. This one happens to be, I don't, it's got a cheap bar, but that will work. But you got to have a saw that's relatively complete, cosmetically relatively clean. And when you pull it over, there's a little bit of compression. One of the compression tests, that one just failed. But one of the compression tests can be, does it have enough compression to hold itself from dropping down? This one doesn't. <laughs> so we got some work to do. Stuff like that. And obviously you're going to ask the guy, does it run? Well, this poor fool, he didn't ask nothing. Let's see if it runs. He just bought it, came in the mail. Now he wants to find out what he's got. Well, it runs. That's a start, isn't it? one here the stop switch doesn't work so that's something that has to be replaced you got to have a good switch um, what I like to do and we're gonna do it with this saw is I like to warm it up shut it off and see how easy it restarts um, I don't want to get into all the theory but it tells you all kind of things about the saw so let's see if this one does that I shut it off This should be one pull. So let's take a test cut. And this would be, again, just got it, got it running. Let's see what it does. And we're going to start from that. That is the starting point. didn't go well, huh? So obviously this guy's got some work to do. That muffler smells like rat crap. <laughs> it probably has a mouse in there. It just got really hot. It's smoking. My hunch is it's not going to restart. Our starting point but can you imagine spending your afternoon with that so after that rather uh, non-spectacular start let's start evaluating what we found first and foremost it's not going to take a saw guy to figure out that that chain is whooped look what it did it cut a circle and it produced some dust not a lot of chip so one of the first things that can happen to that saw is just a good chain sharpening. Second thing is it's just not running right. Now, I can jump ahead and say it's low compression, but there might be some things we can do to get it run a little bit better so at least it can cut through a log. Now remember, this is hard maple, so this is a little tougher test. Obviously, this is not the right saw for hard maple, but 
I don't know. Let's get it up on our field bench and see if there's anything we can do with it. And there's another very important thing that a guy has to do when he's checking out a saw to buy, which is really hard to do on eBay, is does it oil? Is there oil on the chain? That one doesn't look like there's much oil. Of course, there's a variety of reasons why that might be, but so far this saw has got two strikes. One, it runs like crap. Um, more likely due to low compression than anything else. And two, I'm not seeing a lot of oil on that chain. Yeah, I know. Everybody comes out to the woods with their new used saw with a, a damn shop in their car. But, I don't know. Let's see what we have here. My speculation is, before we even go anywhere with this saw, my speculation is what we have is just very low compression. And this is going to need a, a freshened up top end. But, let's just take a look and see what we have inside. Now this series of saw, I happen to like these. Um, I've got a ripping 238 which acts like a 50cc saw. You know, it looks complete. It says it has a 242 top end. It is hot, 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 hot. Of course, the other thing it could have is an air leak. Very easily could have an air leak. Let's take a look at the spark plug, if I can get it out without burning my fingers. Now, I'd say it has more than an air leak. It has a spark plug, which is just hand tight in there. So yeah, how do you like that? What fool did that? Let's see what happens when you have a spark plug that's actually tightened. That's amazing. What do you think? You think we just gained some compression? <laughs> All right, there's modification number one is actually put the spark plug all the way in. Boy, you can't make this stuff up, can you? This was obviously one of my projects that I just never quite finished. 242 muffler, 242 top end, spark plug that was in finger tight, and Suck it in all that air. I hope I didn't scorch that cylinder. Let's see what we got for compression now. Oh, wow. Look at that. Yeah, see, that almost passed the compression test. Let's see if it fires. Fires. I bet we have a completely different running saw now. So we discovered on this saw that the spark plug was only in finger tight. That was problem number one, which is why the compression was so low. And we also discovered that the uh, wire that goes to the switch is completely disconnected. Okay, try this again. Um, I just touched the chain up. I didn't have the right file, so... I gotta tell you though, that chain doesn't have a prayer. A couple of reasons. I don't know if I can show it on camera. But it's got a couple of missing teeth. Put my glasses on so I can actually get there. So, again, when you're evaluating a saw, when you see something like this, where it's a broken tooth, obviously it's not gonna cut straight. In addition to having that broken tooth, you've got two cutters on the other side. So this poor chain just doesn't have a prayer of cutting straight. It really doesn't.
Look at that. Let's give this thing a little more fuel too, before it excites us. Stick it so. Gaining. Let's see if we got enough gas. Got a little bit of gas. Should be enough. Um, it does seem like it's pumping. But I'm going to go back to my original assessment that it's got either an air leak or low compression. Got out of the woods just in time. Got a big storm coming in. I hear some of the projects that are on the bench. <laughs> this uh, poor steel here and that one there both were modified by skitter. So they have cosmetic damage. But back to the saw at hand. Again, this is that series from uh, 238, 42, 242, 246 um, that I'm working on here. This is actually a 242 top end muffler. And see how easy it is to get to the carburetor? He's got those carburetor screws right there. Um, it's got these coils. It's a two piece ignition system where there's a primary and secondary coil. But anyway, what we're going to do is it, it's acting like it's got an air leak or a bad carburetor or both. What I'm hoping is in line with the uh, series that's something anybody can fix that it's not case seals because that would be more than a person's going to fix with tools from Lowe's. What I'm hoping is it's going to be like a fuel line uh, maybe where the uh, where the carburetor meets up with the uh, manifold or something along those lines. So anyway what we're going to do here pull that carburetor take a look inside and at a minimum do a carb kit Make sure the pulse is clear, the hole into the cylinder is clear, and check the uh, fuel line down into the fuel tank at a minimum. And I think I'm going to pull the muffler and make sure it's not a, a uh, scored top end as possible. So One of the reasons I like these saws is just look how simple that thing is. Muffler, cylinder, carb, I mean you can have that thing apart in minutes. So it's one of the more enjoyable saws to work on because of that. Of course, we've already determined that part of the saw's issue was foolish fool here uh, didn't get the spark plug on properly. Look at this arrangement right here. Isn't that simple? Just so easy. I'm not sure I'm happy with the one bar nut routine on the chain brake. But. And I'm not sure I'm happy with the external clutch. One thing I know I'm not happy with is this chain. <laughs> so maybe I can go to the box and miss it chains and get a different chain for it. This thing here is pretty whooped. I'm going to pop the muffler off. Take a look inside the exhaust to make sure that looks clean. Make sure we didn't scratch it up a little bit by running it the way we did. Let's see what we have for a muffler too. I'm kind of curious. This is really all it is for these little, this class of saw. I love this uh, muffler brace they have, you know. That looks really, really restrictive. So, guys, huh, I think this thing needs a muffler mod. Looking inside there, I'm not sure you can see. There's not enough light, but it's clean. It's totally clean. That piston looks just fine. No blow-by, no scratches of any kind. It does have a base gasket, and I'm going to leave it in there for now. And the intake side looks clean. So, 
we got a clean looking piston, clean looking top end. That's a good place to start. Base gasket is there. I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to leave it right where it is. I'm going to see how good we can make it run without any changes along those lines. Even though <laughs> you can see how easy it is to get there. It wouldn't take much to pop that cylinder right off and, and uh, do some modifications to it. But in the spirit of the video, I'm going to leave this as stock as possible and yet again uh, do what a guy can do with tools from uh, Lowe's and see if we can't make this thing run a little bit better than it was out in that test log a few uh, minutes ago, which really was pretty poor. That was a pretty poor showing. From the way this is all wet right in here, it's just wet. Uh, it looks like it was drawing right through there. I believe there was supposed to be a gasket there, and I don't have one. And there's a raised section here. So I'm afraid we're going to have to rely on things like 1194 for gaskets on the intake side and just hope it sticks. Not good, but certainly better than if it's case seals, which was my original speculation. 1194 to the rescue yet again. And the other thing I'm noticing, and I'm looking at this, you know, for the next phase of the operations here, is there isn't a lot of, and this goes right into the discussion of what do you do with a saw when you want to make it run better. And if you look at this area here, you really can't open that up much. There's just not a lot of area to go in order to make that uh, bigger. Notice what you have for transfer ports. You've got a flashlight on there, it's not too bright. That's what's inside that cylinder. And notice that's quite a bit of area. Also notice what you have for exhaust. It's not very big. And on the intake, don't I haven't timed these, so I don't know what the timing is yet. I'm kind of curious. But my instinct on something like this is yeah, I mean, I can widen out the intake somewhat, but there's a point where you really can't, and that's determined by the uh, the uh, width of the skirt on the piston. And also, since really it's kind of a small intake arrangement all the way up to the air filter, uh, on a case like this, assuming I did get uh, the requirement for more fuel downstream with a muffler mod and some other changes, I'd be better off playing with the uh, intake timing versus trying to make that intake port much bigger. That's my instinct. But you know, that's getting ahead of ourselves. And that's also another video. I'm not going to do that. This video here is really just introducing that, uh, that line of saws, that 200 series saws, the 242s and, and the like, and showing you how easy it is to work on these things. That overlaid with the whole video concept of buying a cheap saw online and then trying to turn it into a working saw. I'm not going to get into the whole how do you do a carb kit and all that, but I am going to say a couple of things. When you buy carb kits for these darn things, um, make sure you know the difference between an HDA and an HD. This one here is an HDA. And it says so right in the side of the carburetor. And I've got plenty of HDA kits because I always buy them thinking I'm getting these. An old man thing. And this is for an HD. I've got all kinds of parts for these darn things. Anyway, I'm wandering. But there's another hop-up opportunity right there. Is um, different carburetor. I think I can find a different HDA style carburetor that'll bolt right on. It has a larger ventry than the one that's on there. But that's not what this video is about yet. One thing when you're doing these, is pay attention to what side the gasket is on. You know, this one is right up close. That makes a difference on uh, on how much fuel it uh, produces based on what side the diaphragm is on the gasket. Of course, <laughs> that's making the assumption it was on the right side to begin with. No guarantee.
Also, while I was uh, taking things apart, I drug out some of the bars I have for this size saw. So here are the options I have to put on that little saw. And to stay in theme with the original premise of the video, this is the bar that was on there that cut so lousy up there in the woods. Um, I think I'm going to take it off. I'm going to move to either this Husqvarna bar or the Dolmar. Probably this one. It's got a use chain that I can sharpen up and again would be in theme with the video. The Sujihara is the one that goes on my 238, so I think it's going to go back on the 238. These, uh, there's too much paint in the groove. So I don't know if you looked at my Fugly videos, the Fugly 350. I was having all kinds of issue with the chain binding up in the bar. Turns out what it was was just too much paint in the groove. So until the chain could eat the paint out of the groove, it bound right up. Just an aside, but of these four options, I think this one's going to go on the firewood saw. Has the right, right color, right color letters on it. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a hole right in the fuel line. And fortunately, the fuel line was quite long, too long, so I just pulled some more out of the tank for now. But that hole, all by itself, is one of the reasons why the saw wasn't running good, as well as the fact that I believe it had an air leak right there. So I used my uh, trusty Freebond 1194, and I just tacked up the flange on the cylinder and, and tacked up the intake manifold. You got to use common sense when you put the gasket back on, make sure the pulse hole lines up with the right hole on the carburetor and on the manifold. And there it is with the carburetor on, air horn. So you can actually put the choke and the throttle on easily afterwards, so there's no sense in trying to put it on as one assembly as you do some. Okay, I couldn't help myself. Look at those little pea shooter holes in there. I think I have to. I can't just leave it like that. Damn. So I opened it up on the inside there so it's oh a little smaller than the exhaust port. Inside smaller than the outside. The light doesn't get in there, but it is. Just roughed it out with a die grinder, just ugly. Um, I'll eventually graft a tube onto that. I'm going to leave this pretty much stock for now. And that cuts the uh, cross-sectional area down. To See, you can hardly tell. Clean little saw. Easy to put together. I think it's time to put a bar and chain on this thing and bring it back up to the woods. What do you think? I had done a prior video today where I was cutting through that log and it was in pretty rough shape. Uh, spark plug wasn't tight, which <laughs> maybe I have to take the blame for that, but it ran like crap expectedly. So, um, but it also needed a card kit and it also needed a fuel line. So I went back to the shop and uh, did the basic maintenance, just carb kit, fuel line, just set the uh, uh, carb adjustment school screws to standard and I sharpened the chain. So the premise being, bought the saw, ran like crap as it was, the uh, chain oiler works fine, saw that, and it ran. So those are two major criteria. The fact that the chain oiler worked, it runs and it's complete with no real broken parts means this would it be this is a legitimate contender for a firewood saw. So let's see what we have. Oh, oh. 